This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mark Barnes, www.414.org.uk Confessions by St. Augustine Translated by Albert C. Outler Book One Chapter One Great art thou, O Lord, and greatly to be praised. Great is thy power, and infinite is thy wisdom. And man desires to praise thee, for he is a part of thy creation. He bears his mortality about with him, and carries the evidence of his sin, and the proof that thou dost resist the proud. Still he desires to praise thee, this man who is only a small part of thy creation. Thou hast prompted him, that he should delight to praise thee, for thou hast made us for thyself, and restless is our heart until it comes to rest in thee. Grant me, O Lord, to know and understand whether first to invoke thee or to praise thee, whether first to know thee or call upon thee. But who can invoke thee, knowing thee not? For he who knows thee not may invoke thee as another than thou art. It may be that we should invoke thee in order that we may come to know thee. But how shall I call on him in whom they have not believed? Or how shall they believe without a preacher? Now, they shall praise the Lord who seek him, for those who seek him shall find him, and finding him shall praise him. I will seek thee, O Lord, and call upon thee. I call upon thee, O Lord, in my faith which thou hast given me, which thou hast inspired in me through the humanity of thy Son, and through the ministry of thy preacher. Chapter 2 And how shall I call upon my God, my God and my Lord? For when I call on him, I ask him to come into me. And what place is there in me into which my God can come? How could God, the God who made both heaven and earth, come into me? Is there anything in me, O Lord my God, that can contain thee? Do even the heaven and the earth which thou hast made, and in which thou didst make me, contain thee? Is it possible that since without thee nothing would be which does exist, thou didst make it so that whatever exists has some capacity to receive thee? Why then do I ask thee to come into me, since I also am, and could not be, if thou wert not in me? For I am not, after all, in hell. And yet thou art there too, for, if I go down into hell, thou art there. Therefore I would not exist. I would simply not be at all, unless I exist in thee, from whom and by whom and in whom all things are. Even so, Lord, even so. Where do I call thee to, when I am already in thee? Or from whence wouldst thou come into me? Where, beyond heaven and earth, could I go, that there my God might come to me, he who hath said, I fill heaven and earth? Chapter 3 Since then thou dost fill the heaven and the earth, do they contain thee? Or dost thou fill and overflow them, because they cannot contain thee? And where dost thou pour out what remains of thee, after heaven and earth are full? Or indeed, is there no need that thou, who dost contain all things, should be contained by any, since those things which thou dost fill thou fillest by containing them? For the vessels which thou dost fill do not confine thee, since even if they were broken thou wouldst not be poured out. And, when thou art poured out on us, thou art not thereby brought down, rather we are uplifted. Thou art not scattered, Rather thou dost gather us together. But when thou dost fill all things, dost thou fill them with thy whole being? Or, since not even all things together could contain thee altogether, does any one thing contain a single part? And do all things contain that same part at the same time? Do singulars contain thee singly? 
Do greater things contain more of thee, and smaller things less? Or is it not rather that thou art wholly present everywhere, yet in such a way that nothing contains thee wholly? Chapter 4 What therefore is my God? What, I ask, but the Lord God? For who is Lord but the Lord himself, or who is God besides our God? Most High, most excellent, most potent, most omnipotent, most merciful and most just, most secret and most truly present, most beautiful and most strong, stable yet not supported, unchangeable yet changing all things, never new, never old, making all things new, yet bringing old age upon the proud and they know it not, always working, ever at rest, gathering, yet needing nothing, sustaining, pervading and protecting, creating, nourishing and developing, seeking and yet possessing all things. Thou dost love, but without passion, art jealous, yet free from care, dost repent without remorse, art angry, yet remainest serene. Thou changest thy ways, leaving thy plans unchanged. Thou recoverest what thou hast never really lost. Thou art never in need, but still thou dost rejoice at thy gains. Art never greedy, yet demandest dividends. Men pay more than is required, so that thou dost become a debtor. Yet who can possess anything at all which is not already thine? Thou owest men nothing, yet payest out to them as if in debt to thy creature. And when thou dost cancel debts, thou losest nothing thereby. Yet, O oh my God, my life, my holy joy, what is this that I have said? What can any man say when he speaks of thee? But woe to them that keep silence, since even those who say most are dumb. Chapter 5 Who shall bring me to rest in thee? Who will send thee into my heart, so to overwhelm it that my sins shall be blotted out, and I may embrace thee, my only good? What art thou to me? Have mercy, that I may speak. What am I to thee, that thou shouldst command me to love thee? And if I do it not, art angry and threatenest vast misery. Is it then a trifling sorrow not to love thee? It is not so to me. Tell me, by thy mercy, O Lord my God, what thou art to me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. So speak, that I may hear. Behold, the ears of my heart are before thee, O Lord. Open them, and say to my soul, I am your salvation. I will hasten after that voice and I will lay hold upon thee. Hide not thy face from me. Even if I die, let me see thy face, lest I die. The house of my soul is too narrow for thee to come into me. Let it be enlarged by thee. It is in ruins. Do thou restore it. There is much about it which must offend thy eyes. I confess and know it. But who will cleanse it? Or, to whom shall I cry but to thee? Cleanse thou me from my secret faults, O Lord, and keep back thy servant from strange sins. I believe, and therefore do I speak. But thou, O Lord, thou knowest. Have I not confessed my transgressions unto thee, O my God? And hast thou not put away the iniquity of my heart? I do not contend in judgment with thee, who art truth itself. And I would not deceive myself, lest my iniquity lie even to itself. I do not therefore contend in judgment with thee. For if thou, Lord, shouldst mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Chapter 6 Still, dust and ashes as I am, allow me to speak before thy mercy. Allow me to speak, for behold, 
it is to thy mercy that I speak, and not to a man who scorns me. Yet perhaps even thou mightest scorn me. But when thou dost turn and attend to me, thou wilt have mercy upon me. For what do I wish to say, O Lord my God, but that I know not whence I came hither into this life in death? Or should I call it death in life? I do not know. And yet the consolations of thy mercy have sustained me from the very beginning, as I have heard from my fleshly parents, from whom and in whom thou didst form me in time. For I cannot myself remember. Thus, even though they sustained me by the consolation of woman's milk, neither my mother nor my nurses filled their own breasts, but thou, through them, didst give me the food of infancy according to thy ordinance and thy bounty which underlie all things. For it was thou who didst cause me not to want more than thou gavest, and it was thou who gavest to those who nourished me the will to give me what thou didst give them. And they, by an instinctive affection, were willing to give me what thou hadst supplied abundantly. It was, indeed, good for them that my good should come through them, though in truth it was not from them, but by them. For it is from thee, O God, that all good things come, and from my God is all my health. This is what I have since learned, as thou hast made it abundantly clear by all that I have seen thee give, both to me and to those around me. For even at the very first I knew how to suck, to lie quiet when I was full, and to cry when in pain. Nothing more. Afterward, I began to laugh, at first in my sleep, then when waking. For this I have been told about myself, and I believe it, though I cannot remember it, for I see the same things in other infants. Then, little by little, I realized where I was, and wished to tell my wishes to those who might satisfy them, but I could not, for my wants were inside me, and they were outside, and they could not by any power of theirs come into my soul. And so I would fling my arms and legs about and cry, making the few and feeble gestures that I could, though indeed the signs were not much like what I inwardly desired, and when I was not satisfied, either from not being understood, or because what I got was not good for me. I grew indignant that my elders were not subject to me, and that those on whom I actually had no claim did not wait on me as slaves, and I avenged myself on them by crying. That infants are like this, I have myself been able to learn by watching them, and they, though they knew me not, have shown me better what I was like than my own nurses who knew me. And behold, my infancy died long ago, but I am still living. But thou, O Lord, whose life is for ever, and in whom nothing dies, since before the world was, indeed, before all that can be called before, thou wast, and thou art the God and Lord of all thy creatures, and with thee abide all the stable causes of all unstable things, the unchanging sources of all changeable things and the eternal reasons of non-rational and temporal things. Tell me, thy suppliant, O God, tell me, O merciful one, in pity tell a pitiful creature whether my infancy followed yet another earlier age of my life that had already passed away before it. Was it such another age which I spent in my mother's womb? But something of that sort has been suggested to me, and I have myself seen pregnant women. But what, O oh God, my joy, preceded that period of my life? Was I, indeed, anywhere or anybody 